Exodus 3, verses 2 to 6. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bush was not consumed. So Moses said, I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight, why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Read more. Then he said, Do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He also said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Genesis 16, verse 7. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. Judges 2, verses 1 to 2. Now the angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim, and he said, I brought you up out of Egypt and led you into the land which I have sworn to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and as for you, you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their altars. But you have not obeyed me. What is this you have done? Zechariah 3 verses 1 to 2. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Indeed, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Zechariah 1 verses 12 and 13. Then the angel of the Lord said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you have no compassion for Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, with which you have been indignant these seventy years? The Lord answered the angel who was speaking with me with gracious words, comforting words. March, April 1986 The angel of the Lord in the books of Daniel, Revelation, and Zechariah. The angel of the Lord, his or her angel, part one. Angel, Hebrew Malak messenger, a supernatural being created by God, superior to man, and acting as a representative or messenger of God. There are Bible passages where Malak and Agalos do not refer to supernatural beings, but to prophets and others fulfilling the function of messenger. 2 Samuel 3 verse 14, Ezekiel 23 verse 16, Haggai 1 verse 13. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. Also, you can read Matthew 11 verse 10, Luke 7 verse 24, etc. In other passages, the term seemed to apply to Christ himself, Exodus 23 verse 20 to 23, Malachi 3 verse 1, Acts 7 verse 35. I am going to read Exodus 23 verses 20 to 23. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee in unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. The specific references, in any case, must be found by context study. The angel of the Lord is thus a messenger at the Lord, 
male or female, not only in the sense that he or she belongs to the Lord and is faithful to him, but more particularly in the sense that he or she comes as a messenger sent by God with a message from God. Clearly then, a person with a message from God may be termed the angel of the Lord, male or female God's messenger, or personal representative on earth, to personify the heavenly beings, the Godhead, or the angels. In Genesis 1 verses 26 and 27, the first Adam and Eve were made in the image of Christ, male and female. In John 1 verses 13, 10, and 14, the creators of all things, and were types of the second Adam male and female, 1 John 1 verses 1 to 3. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creeping things, and wild beasts on the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. God said, Let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image after our likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tame beasts, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Hebrew 11 verses 3, 1 verse 2, Psalm 104 verse 30. So, God created man in his own image, the image and likeness of God created he him. Male and female he created them. Colossians 3 verses 9 and 10, James 3 verses 8 and 9. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and to both have dominion. Two rulers. Genesis 1 verse 25 to 28. Colossians 1 verse 26. 3 verse 10. In the beginning, before all time, was the Word, Christ, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God himself. Isaiah 9 verse 6. He was present originally with God. All things were made and came into existence through him, and without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. He came into the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him, did not know him. He came to that which belonged to him, to his own domain creation, things, world. And they who were his own did not receive him, and did not welcome him. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, powers, privileges, right, to become the children of God, that is, to those who believe in it here too, trust in and rely on his name. Isaiah 56 verse 5 Who owe their birth neither to bloods, nor to the will of the flesh, that of physical impulse, nor to the will of man, that of a natural father, but to God, they are born of God. And the word, Christ, became flesh, human incarnate, and tabernacled, fixed his tent of flesh, lived a while among us, and we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as an only begotten son receives from his father, full of grace, favor, loving kindness, and truth. Isaiah 40 verse 5. No man has ever seen God at any time, the only unique Son, the only begotten God, who is in the bosom, that is, in the intimate presence of the Father. He has declared Him. He has revealed Him, brought Him out where He can be seen. He has interpreted Him, and He has made Him known. Proverbs 8 verse 30, John 1 verses 1 and 2, and 11 to 14 to 18. Thus it is written, the first man Adam became a living being, an individual personality. The last Adam, Christ, 
became a life-giving spirit, restoring the dead to life. But it is not the spiritual life which came first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from out of earthy made of dust, earth-minded. The second man is the Lord from out of heaven. Genesis 2 verse 7. Now those who are made of the dust are like him who was first made of the dust, earth-minded, and as is the man from heaven, so also are those who are of heaven, heaven-minded. And just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, so shall we. And so, let us also bear the image of the man of heaven. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 45 to 49 Amplified Version. Being the creators, male and female, of the first Adam and Eve, male and female, one must conclude that Christ and his spirit, 2 Peter 1 verse 11, Romans 8 verses 9 to 16, are the everlasting parents of the whole human race, beginning with Adam and Eve to the present time, Isaiah 9 verse 6, DA 483. As in heaven, so on earth. The union of the masculine and feminine principles creates, brings forth according to kind, male and female. As in the natural, Romans 1, verse 20. So in the spiritual, there can be no everlasting father without an everlasting mother to bring forth fruit, a new creation. The doctrine of angels did not occupy the central theme in the Old Testament, but it furnished valuable insight into God's provision for care, comfort, and instruction to his prophets and people. It enhances one's concept of the sacredness and majesty of God. It causes his people to rejoice over the divine help God furnishes the earth's inhabitants through the angel guardians, helpers, and mediators. The angel of the Lord has Christ-like attributes, Messiah, Mediator, Intercessor, and carries all the titles of Christ, but is not Christ. Scholars call the angel of the Lord a type or shadow of Jesus Christ. This angelic figure stands out prominently among the angel appearances in the Old and New Testaments. Bible scholars have been unable to make one unified determination as to the real identity of Mechach Jehovah, Hebrew. This angel stands out as very different from the angels in general, mentioned in the Bible and known by the writers of both the Old and New Testaments. This heavenly being always appears for a special event and takes the place of prominence in the center of the event, 2 Samuel 14, verse 20. In the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord appeared to Daniel as a beneficent messenger in whose wisdom one can safely confide. This angel fights against Israel's enemies, 2 Kings 19, verse 35, helps God's prophets, 1 Kings 19, verses 7, 21, 22, 25, verse 35, confronts the hostile sorcerers, Numbers 22, verses 22 to 26, and protects and guides the nation of Israel, Exodus 14, verses 19 to 23. The scripture references in which the angel of the Lord Jehovah appears are the ones that do not distinguish between the angel of the Lord Jehovah and the person of the Lord Jehovah. For example, in Genesis 16, during Hagar's flight from Sarah, the angel of the Lord Jehovah found her, verse 7, and talked with her. During the conversation, the angel refers to the Lord Jehovah, himself in the third person, verse 11. But the angel also spoke as if he was the Lord himself. I will greatly multiply your descendants that they cannot be numbered for multitude, verse 10. In verse 13, she called the name of the Lord Jehovah, who spoke to her. Hev, 
I really seen God and remained alive after seeing him. Genesis 21. During her second flight, the angel of God called to her from heaven. Also in this passage of scriptures, the angel spoke as if he were the Lord himself. For I will make him a great nation. Verse 19. Genesis 22. The sacrifice of Isaac. Just before Abraham killed Isaac, the angel of the Lord Jehovah stopped him, verse 11, and told him, For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Verse 12. Genesis 31, verses 11 to 13. Then the angel of God said to me in a dream, Jacob, and I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up your eyes. I am the God of Bethel. Exodus 3. The angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a burning bush, and the following conversation is between the Lord and Moses. Exodus 14. The Red Sea. And the angel of God went before the army of Israel. Verse 19. The Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud went before Israel. Verse 24. Judges 2 verse 1. The angel of the Lord went up from Gilgal to Betchem, and he said, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you into the land which I swore to give to your fathers. Judges 6 verse 11. The angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak at Ophrah. Verse 11. But during the conversation, the Lord turned to him and said, Verse 14. The treatment of these verses by the commentators is varied and contradictory because it has not been time until now for the truth to be revealed. Not until after the revelation of the personhood and gender of the Holy Spirit could this be revealed by inspiration. In the human family, the wife or a daughter is often called an angel in endearing terms. 6. A person like an angel in goodness or loveliness, Webster, as in the earthly family, so also in the heavenly. The angel of the Lord is the Lord's angel. In the earthly family, Eve was Adam's angel. She was an extension of him and identified with him by the same name, Adam, himself, in the second person. Another Adam, female, Genesis 5, verses 1 to 2. Adam was one, head, with his rib until God, through an operation of the Spirit, separated his rib, Eve, from him. God joined them, two heads, together again as one, but two separate beings, each having a head. Therefore, the second Adam has a counterpart, one identified with himself and with his same name, John 14, Verse 26, but separate from him. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he, she, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrances whatsoever I have said unto you. John 14, verse 26. Clearly, the Holy Ghost carries the same name as Christ, both being sent from the Heavenly Father and Mother as intercessors between heaven and earth. In the natural earthly marriage relationship, you do not have a masculine person with a feminine body. Rather, you have a masculine person joined with a feminine person who, in spiritual terms, brings forth children, male and female, who are equivalent to the body of believers who know and are acquainted with whom their mother and father are, a family, father, mother, children, born of the Spirit. Therefore, the reference in the New Testament, especially regarding the angel of the Lord, Jesus, as a very special meaning, heretofore, unknown, that is, not revealed by inspiration. The angel of the Lord is not a created being, but the divine being himself, herself. In the first instance, Revelation, the second person of the Godhead in the order of creation. 
in the second instance, an image or likeness of the second person of the Godhead in the same order, Adam, Eve, children, male, female. Reasons 1. The angel explicitly identifies with the Lord on different occasions. 2. Those to whom he, she, makes his, her, presence known recognize him, her, as divine. 3. The writers of Scripture call him her Jehovah. 4. The doctrine here implies that a plurality of persons in the Godhead is in complete accordance with the total revelation of God, Father, Mother, Children, Christ and His Spirit, Angel, Male and Female. Finally, 5. The unity of the Scriptures would be violated if it could be proved that the central point, this angel in the Old Testament revelation was a created angel. At the same time, the New Testament shows the angel to be the incarnation of the second person of the Godhead in the order of creation, in human form, at times, to instruct God's prophets in the mysteries of the Holy Ghost who Gabriel symbolizes with Michael, the archangel on the mercy seats in the Holy of Holies. This is the representation with which most commentators are not familiar, who shows the angel of the Lord to be only a created heavenly being, an angel sent from on high, on divine missions to men and women, and who takes the place of God in his dealings with mankind. The angel may speak the divine eye, and almost be identified with God himself. Yet, the angel of the Lord is really and truly a manifestation or extension of God, as was Eve of the first Adam, the type, a likeness. The angel is a form in which God appears. He, she, is God himself, herself, in human form. The first Adam and Eve were types of the last Adam, male and female, in the flesh, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 45, 47, and 49. Hence, two mediators, two messiahs, two heads, two high priests, two teachers of righteousness, two angels, two intercessory members of the Godhead, the Lord and his spirit, angel, male, and female priests of the Most High God. Amen and Amen. As the Hebrew religion developed under the influence of the surrounding heathen religions, their concept of God became more pronounced as being the one all-powerful God, and within this development of thought, they saw the angel of the Lord as a transitional mode of appearance between the direct revelation of God and his withdrawal into the secret place, at a distance. We must consider other biblical references concerning the angel of the Lord, who appears in various forms, in a flame, a dream, a cloud, Revelation 10, as thunder, and in human form. But the principal view of the angel has to do with passages where there is a definite distinction made between the angel and the Lord, where two different personalities are involved. The ancients saw in the angel of God the operation of God himself in a manner more direct than could be accomplished through any other heavenly being. The angel was an occasional manifestation of God, spoken of sometimes as God himself, but at other times as distinct from him. The borderline between the angel of the Lord as a specific medium of divine revelation and as a created messenger cannot always be discerned except through the eye of inspiration. We have in the past been schooled in the progressive character of divine revelation in greater or lesser degrees, but never have we been called upon, before now, to stretch our minds to the utmost to discern the ministry of the angels in the time of the end of all things. The keys are found in the books of Daniel, Zechariah, and revelation is brought forth by the latter-day revelation of the spirit of prophecy. For example, in the book of Daniel, angels were given names for the first time in the scriptures, 
Daniel 8 verses 13 and 16, 9 verse 21, Daniel 10 verse 21, 10 verses 13, 20, and 21, 12 verse 1, Angels Gabriel, Michael, and Palmoni, Daniel 8 verse 13. As sin increased, God became increasingly aloof from contact with the created beings of earth, and the doctrine of angels became more and more pronounced. The angels brought the animals, etc., into the ark. The angel stayed in the hand of Abraham. The angel walked with Daniel and the three Hebrews in the fiery furnace. And much more. <music>